This is the bell housing to the transmission. Which looks, it's dirty, but hey, no big deal, right? And it bolts to the engine, but um, <laughs> there's that, and then there's that. What's up, Live Bright Nation? Hey, what's up, Live Bright Nation? So we are here at our favorite shop in Los Angeles, DCD Customs. DCD Customs, they're the same exact shop that did the Hemi swap and the one tons on the JL. But this time, we're not here for the Jeep. We're here for the Ultra 4 car, which, as most of you know, or maybe you don't know, because I don't know if we've ever really talked about it, our bomber chassis has essentially been through two full Ultra 4 racing seasons without ever getting a full teardown and refresh. That means the engine, the transmission, the transfer case, the axles, everything has gone through two full years of beatings, two King of the Hammers with a bunch of other Ultra 4 races without ever really just having a little bit of TLC. So that's what essentially Kevin and I are dedicating our entire Christmas month of December and probably most of January into doing. We are going to have this entire thing torn apart, get the engine looked at, the transmission, the transfer case, make sure that everything is as tip top shape as we can make it or more accurately as we can afford to make it before King of the Hammers because again, we wanna cross that finish line and we would hate to get stuck out in the middle of the desert, unable to cross the line because of something dumb that would have been really easy to just take care of with the thing torn apart. So that's what we're doing. And for now, this is Chris. And Chris is unfortunately the poor sap who has been put in charge of getting everything torn apart. The bomber chassis, if you can't tell, is very tight fitting. Everything is squeezed in there, barely. Uh, and I imagine that getting it all out is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Now, if you're wondering where one of our favorite mechanics, Danny is, don't worry, he's here too. Ready with the hobbies. Shelly's taking the cruise. She's ready with the hummus. Oh, C. C. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris here uh, is actually a really good friend of Danny's, and he he knows what the hell he's doing. I think, for the most part, we're trusting him. So he actually did the teardown and the rebuild on David, the owner of DCD Customs Ultra Four Car, and he's worked on a ton of short course cars, right? Yes. And I imagine the tearing everything out is probably the easy part. Yeah. Remembering where it goes is the hard part. <laughs> Putting it all back in is the hard part. But once we get everything out, luckily for us at least, all of the businesses or the shops that are gonna be doing all of these refreshes and rebuilds for us are kind of located in the area. So CBM Motorsports is actually located nearby to rebuild the engine. Also advanced adapters for the Atlas transfer case. There's also a transmission shop, which we'll introduce to you guys as well. This. It's gonna be a project that's gonna take probably more than a month, and I'm happy that I'm not the one that has to do it. <laughs> Everybody out in the world, stop messing around. Calling all you freaks and nerds, you're just missing what you want. Sisters living the dream, but everybody's singing along. It's okay, we'll all soon be gone. Hey, what's the matter with the bright red lights? Hey, in the moment when the world went blind, but everything's alright. We don't give up. Okay, we'll all soon be gone. Woo! Woo! 
Joey! Ta-da! So I get back here and I'm like, oh look, let me just go ahead and pull that engine out real quick. Anyways, that's, that's Chris, not what Chris did a great job getting it out quick. Believe it or not though, this is the easiest part of the entire job because... Yeah, now we're going to take the engine over to CBM. What are you doing, little doggy? So we're going to take the engine down to CBM. They're going to tear it apart. We're going to cover all that. We're going to take the transmission over to Maximum Transmission. We're going to tear that down and show you about rebuilding the entire transmission. And then the transfer case will go over to Advanced Adapters, tear that down, and we're going to show you how bad everything looks and then how good and clean it all looks when, when it's done. And then, of course, from there, the worst part is figuring out how it all goes back together. But honestly, I'm impressing General that this even came out in one solid piece because yeah, there? there is no room in that him? chassis. Like, look at this. Like, it just, <laughs> the clearances are so, so tiny, but somehow, ta-da! So now we've got to load this up on a trailer and uh, yeah, take each component where it belongs. So along with our engine, transmission, transfer case, and tire drivetrain, we are also, Getting the honor of taking this super rad, fully custom DCD Customs built LJ over to CBM Motors as well. Yeah, this thing's got freaking portals on it. Look at the clearance under that diff right there. Haha! <laughs> so it's my turn now to abandon Kevin over at DCD Customs because he has to install new brake pads and rotors onto the stepchild, which if you remember, he picked up in the last video when he abandoned me at the shop. But that means that I have the absolute pleasure, slight sarcasm there, <laughs> to tow that beautiful sexy LJ right there, along with our whole engine setup over to CBM Motorsports, which is would normally be about an hour, hour and a half from where DCD Customs is, except this is LA. So it's gonna take me like two and a half hours, which even if there wasn't traffic, it would still probably take me a while because I can only go 55 miles an hour. Cause I'll be darned if my first ever speeding ticket ever is for going 56 miles an hour. So I'm gonna, oh God, I'm gonna go the speed limit and uh, try not to rear end all these people that keep cutting me up. just like to point out that normally I do not drive the truck especially when we're hauling a trailer not because I can't but because Kevin does not let me because he gets super anxious when he's in the passenger seat of any vehicle for any reason plus he says I drive like a daredevil what does he know because obviously back the trailer in a parking spot by myself unhooked it never worked with that trailer before so figured it out by myself we got the LJ unloaded and we've got the engine in the other side of CBM Motorsports where we will start the teardown tomorrow because it is kind of late in the day. But anyways, this is just me patting myself on the back because I'm actually kind of proud of myself right now. All by my lonesome. No Kevin to help me. Ha. Except I did have Jelly Belly. She's my cheerleader in the passenger seat. Good girl. You're just a good girl. Thank you for the kisses. For real, look at that parking job. I just parked this trailer better than Kevin can park a vehicle backing into a space. Don't tell him I said that though. So, anyways, he hasn't seen the video or what I said, but he will and he'll get mad at me later. He just knows I said something. Anyways, we have zero time to waste. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go over CBM Motorsports, how rad they are and what all they do in more detail in the next 
video because we need to get this thing torn down because we need to get everything measured up and we need to see what type of shape it's in. So, well, I just know that it leaks from every orifice, like front seal, rear seal. There's bolts with just oil coming out of the bolt. The very first time we ever like wide open, full throttle out in Johnson Valley, oil went everywhere. So we know it needs some love. And to help us figure out what it needs, we got to tear it down. And that's where this gentleman right here comes from. So this is Timbo. He is the teardown master. Think like Bob the Builder, but in reverse. <laughs> and he's missing the tool belt, but it'll be fine. So he's going to actually help us get this thing torn down so we can figure out what it needs and uh, how much it's going to cost. Explain to me what you just discovered. So we just pulled out the balancer right now and we noticed that the balancer is pinned. It's drilled to be pinned and the crankshaft has been drilled to be pinned, but there is no pin to be found. There's, <laughs> There's so, no pin. Right there, right? Yeah. So what's the, what's the purpose of pinning? It's to keep it, actually the balancer and the crankshaft rotating at the same speed because when you're going high RPM, it's possible the balancer could just start spinning on its own and then it'll damage the crank. So, so the balancer gets pressed onto pressed the crank. On it's a crank. press fit, but what happens is from all the shaking, high RPMs, bouncing, hitting rev limiter, clutch kicking, anything that causes a quick change, quick change in, you're right, right, could cause the crank to actually spin some, which then throws off Everything. all your timing, Everything. right, which throws timing, off all your timing exactly. so and you destroys it. it to be so you pin extra, it. It's like an extra precaution. Actually, so you pin it. Correct. So you drill it and pin it. So that way it's, it's, it's securing yeah. the pulley to the crank itself so it can't actually spin which these were both they were prepped for it prep and maybe at one point in time it had a pin but it is nowhere to be but found it is nowhere now nowhere to be found to be found so <laughs> <laughs> this, this is one of the reasons of many that we are doing what we're doing right now uh, because that's definitely something that we want to make sure is properly right. done yeah when sure. it goes back together <laughs> oh, we'll definitely put a pin in there <laughs> So we just found another issue. We just pulled off the windage tray right now, and it looks like they didn't clearance it enough. So the rod bolt was actually scraping on the windage tray. And if you look, so right there, you can actually see where it looks like someone kind of hammered or, well, yeah, you know. Look at the vent. Look at so, the vent. Yeah, you can look at the vent, yeah. Exactly. So they like clearanced it because they knew that the spacing was an issue, and they did it over here as well. They did not, however, do it over here. See how smooth and straight that is, and that was, the result so the proper way to do this rather than self clearancing it that way would just be to space it properly yes yeah, well, well they had spaces here they just didn't have enough so i would suggest are, at are, least just one more washer are these nuts just holding that windage tray on or that's all it does all, all these do is just raise it up to keep this away from the rod bolts that's all it does oh so you only need like two threads basically two threads. Yeah, yeah like, like correctly, correctly, yeah, correctly. Yeah. almost nothing yeah, because once you lock that's tight so these funny. nuts on, they're, they're not going on anywhere. Right. You know, so and they're not securing anything but a light correct, piece of metal. Light piece of metal. Gotcha. So. Brittany, you got your hair going into our engine. Oh my bad. Is Sorry. that like <laughs> that, that magic Brittany does? <laughs> that magic Brittany fairy dust? <laughs> Yeah, that goes all the way down. Why? Yeah. It's almost on that piston. Just drag yeah. it. Check it out. Yeah, you can give it to him. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty. So that's something so got stuck see, and was dragging for a little bit. You can see the lines. So those are very. It's just the one yeah. that's really bad. Yeah. Is it, was it just that one? Yeah. Oh, I mean, the other pistons look pretty good, but those ones I showed you, that was one of them. There's one or two. Yeah, yeah. one or two of them. So you think it was just like it possibly just dirty, dirty debris oil. or something? Debris, dirty oil, sand gets up in it. Just yeah, the first the first oil change. It was pretty pretty dark. It was pretty yeah. I mean, for an engine that just kind of gets 
race. Like when you don't date, when you daily drive it, I kind of see it turning dark. But for something that you race, you should change the oil often. And it should always kind of come out pretty, pretty nice looking. It, the first oil change we ever did on it was not. Very Is that nice too looking. deep? Too. Oh no, you're just going next size. That's why you're going new pistons, anyways. Yeah. So oh, we're gonna go even bigger now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go even. <laughs> 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 well, with your already seeing seed heads, we will. That oh, okay. Take even more advantage of that. So. Yeah, I just didn't know how big you can go. So you just whatever it is, like another ten over or yeah. whatever. This it is, is fairly yeah. common, especially you know with the sandy as this was. It doesn't take long for much sand. It shouldn't take much sand, I should say. Right. A long time to start doing these things once it gets to the top of the piston like that. So. Please always make sure your air filters are tight. <laughs> yeah, we were just yeah. talking about that. Yeah, make sure yeah. the air filters are no, where it should clean. be. I need to find a triple clamp. Yeah, triple clamp. Triple clamp. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, it does. That was good. That, I assume, super frequent oil changes. Like, oh, yeah. After every season. Every race. Oh, yeah. So the good news is, is it's not in bad shape. No, it's really good so shape. So much. The downside is, is it is filthy. So dirty, it all looks to be pretty good. There's a few things here and there we definitely got to take pin care of. Pin the crank. Of, like pin <laughs> the crank. But first things first, we need to clean it. And once we get everything really cleaned, we can get a really good eye on it. We can take all the measurements and see exactly what we need to do. But you're going to have to wait until next time to figure out all the changes we're gonna make. Oh, except, hold on, transmission? Can we show them the transmission real yes, quick? Yes, before we close out. The transmission. There's, there's one more problem we found. So I really didn't wanna pull all of this out and rebuild everything and go through it, but King of the Hammers is a brutal, brutal race, and I really wanted to kinda of get a good idea, we did, on just how good of condition everything is in, and I'm really glad we pulled it out now because this could have been, this could have led to something catastrophic here. This is the bell housing to the transmission. Yeah, which looks, it's dirty, but hey, no big deal, right? And it bolts to the engine, but um, <laughs> there's that. And then there's that. That's about done. So, I mean, two. You can, you can see where this has actually been welded before. So it's it's been an issue already at least once. And this one, it almost looks like it's it been was. been broken for a while. So. Yeah. So these, the downside is this, it's not a replaceable bell, bell housing. housing. So we'd have to replace all of this if we wanted to fix just those two completely, but we can sand it all down and TIG weld it. We can weld the yeah, we're gonna, brace on there. Yeah, that's my, my goal is we'll cut into it, weld it, brace it here, brace it, and just kind of brace it on the outsides. Um, and we'll see what happens. But this is, this could have led, because once these are broken, it puts extra stress on the rest of it. And that could have, that would suck. Could you that imagine just getting like mid race, like three, four hours into the race, and then just like nope. your transmission's no longer attached to your engine? <laughs> like this, you know, this is this is definitely why we're doing everything so, that we're doing. But the reason some of this happens is because these race cars are all solid, solid chassis, solid motor mounts, solid trans mounts. Everything's freaking solid, and it's good right. and bad. It's good and bad, but the vibrations and the amount of impact that these things see is quite high and this is the reason why you need to tear stuff down and kind of go through it and <sighs> probably more frequently than we're gonna do but <laughs> at least we're doing it now yeah so i hope you guys are actually enjoying this going through this whole build tear well tear down process and rebuild, rebuild process with us because it's all new to us going this in depth and I, I i hope you're learning stuff and now you know why we are using the companies we're using and dealing with the people we're dealing with this is definitely a huge learning experience for us as well as just like a roller coaster of <laughs> like, what are we going to find this time? <laughs> <laughs> but we want to bring you guys along for the journey. This is going to be super rad. Again, we'll go over CB and Motorsports more in detail in the next video, along with everything we have to do to put this engine back together before it goes back into the Ultra 4 car. There's going to be some changes we're definitely making. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Lightbright Nation merch That's at lightbrightstudios.com. That's, That's not. Right. All your Life Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. Guys, we love you so much, and we will see you next time. Later, guys. Bye. Bye. Chip out. Goodbye. Blow kiss to the camera. You know it's true. <laughs>
hesitant for a second there. <laughs> As soon as you take a step, she gets all. This is probably the greatest S2000 and 240 meet I've seen in a while. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> 